In the last 24 hours, I've seen lots of posts online about Facebook's partnership with Ray-Ban to create a new kind of smart glasses. The only problem is they're not really that smart. And back in 2012, when I started exploring with Google Glass, this product which even today I think is a remarkable design proposition, but which caused a storm of anxiety about the future of digital, the imposition of pervasive recording and everything that we do, was very much pushed back against within society. Interesting, if you watch the Mark Zuckerberg promo video, he talks about the fact that these new glasses will have a red light that tell you something's being recorded or the power is on to hopefully warn people that some recording's taking place. He also is at pains to mention that when it's off, it's off, nothing else is happening. So there's clearly a kind of context to these glasses that is about Google Glass and the anxiety, anxiety that's created. But the really frustrating thing, I think, for somebody looking at emerging technology in the 21st century is that they're just a pair of glasses with the cameras built into them. And then you interface with a mobile application on your phone. Google Glass had a swipe pad. It had a button like the Google, like the new Facebook Glasses has, but to turn on and off. You could also record or take a photograph with the button. But what it has that was remarkable is the capacity to both see what you're recording. So it was a line of sight product. You could see what you were shooting, but also interact with a screen through that process. So you could have interactive games with your device. You could also ensure that you interact with a range of mobile applications that were being developed at the time. But what I loved about it, which isn't anywhere near this new pro product created by Facebook, is the capacity to wink to take a photograph, which was something that many people felt was quite weird. But if you think about it, the sentiment of trying to use glasses as a way of getting away from the mobile phone mostly requires you not interfacing with it using your hands. And Glass did that really well. With the new Facebook Glass, you'll still need to use your hand to interact with the mobile device. But with Glass, everything was recorded, uploaded to the cloud, edited with what was then called Google's Auto Awesome, and then pushed out as a final video edit. So it, it's not a step back necessarily. But it does leave one sort of wondering, where is the innovation? Because I'd rather probably just wear a GoPro on a helmet and record content that way, which gives a lot more flexibility than the 30 seconds of clips that you can have on the, on the Facebook glasses that its system allows. So a lot of people are frustrated about the product, but I'm sure it'll be successful. And ultimately, I want to try it out.